so funny. Enjoy. There he is. The comedy of Paul Mahas. Come on, give a hand. Paul Mahas. Oh man, thank you guys so much. Wow, this is really weird being up here without a guitar and a band. Uh, very crazy. Uh, my name is Paul Mahas, and uh, it's really great to be here tonight. Um, so a little bit about myself. I'm a singer-songwriter. I've been a musician pretty much my, most of my adult life. And uh, I'm sure you guys have heard of me before, uh, just when Peter Bells just introduced me, and when I just reintroduced myself. And uh, no, so it's really great being here tonight, and it's great because I see I've got some great support here tonight. I've got some old friends. I've got some new friends. I've got my significant other in the audience tonight. And uh, yeah, so the love of my life and I are celebrating a milestone anniversary, 15 years. Thank you. Yeah, we've been engaged 15 years. Yeah. So, so I know what you're thinking. I don't want to rush into things. You know, as the king would say, man, uh, wise men say, only fools rush in. And I ain't no fool, man. No, uh, the, the, the girl, you know, the love of my life, she's really great. My fiance, she's great. But she's got this thing that I like to call the Italian whisper. So we're loading into the gig the other day, and uh, we're loading it, and in the middle of the play, she starts arguing with me. She's like, this is ridiculous. Why are we coming through the back? It makes no sense. We should be coming in through the front. And I'm like, shh, honey. You know, she's like, I don't care. It's a shit gig. They're probably not even going to feed us at this place anyway. She goes, who owns this dump? And I go, Rose, meet Felix, the owner. Felix, meet Rose. And I'm like, Felix, it's not what you think. Rose is actually our, our manager. And he goes, she's good. Because she actually managed to get you fired. Now you can only your shit back out through the kitchen. <laughs> so um, I'm getting a little older, a little wiser, I think. Uh, so I'm thinking I gotta be more responsible, more, more mature. Plus my fiance is always asking, when are you gonna get a real job, you know? So I'm thinking to myself, you know what? I need something easy, something that's gonna offer stability. So I said to her, honey, don't worry, I'm gonna become a stand-up comedian. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so that's gonna work out great. And she was like, uh, yeah, it makes sense because you've been making people laugh with this thing all these years. So I love the way some people will compliment you. Uh, I had this singer friend of mine the other day said, you're so much braver than I am. And I go, what are you talking about? You're great. She goes, exactly. <laughs> so um, I remember this time I'm working at Neptune Beach Club and the owner comes up to me after the gig and he goes, you killed it. And I'm like, oh man, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. He goes, no, I made you Korea. Yeah. So, um, you know, uh, when, I'm, uh, when I'm not doing music, what I love to do, my other passion, is I love to repurpose things. So I said to my girl, I go, you know what repurposing means, right? And she goes, yeah, it's a fancy way of saying you're white trash. <laughs> so she doesn't understand the creative genius. So I see this beauty on the side of the road, and I bring it home and I unveil it, and I said, baby, what do you think of the new toy chest for the kids? And she goes, it's stupid. I'm like, what are you talking about? She goes, it's a refrigerator. <laughs> I go, I know, duh, that's why I turned it on its side. <laughs> and she's like, you're an idiot. It's really dangerous. And I'm like, man, she's gonna really hate what I did with the oven. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, you know, coming up in the music business, I got to meet and work with some of my idols. Um, one of the most famous people I ever met was Mr. Sammy Davis Jr., right? Yeah, and I'll never forget, I know it was so cool, man. I'll never forget the inspiring words he said to me. He said, coffee, light, two sugars. <laughs> and I'm like, Wow, uh, I go, Mr. Davis, I was really actually hoping for some advice. He said, don't burn yourself. <laughs> uh, another uh, really famous person that I met, you guys have heard of the Beatles, right? Yeah. Yeah. I met Yoko Ono. <laughs> now, it was great. I did a show that she wrote called New York Rock, the musical. 
And uh, she was great because I got to work really, really closely with her, like one-on-one. -on -one. And uh, so she was giving me some notes on one of the songs. And uh, she says, okay, this time you do it. Do it with a little more passion like I would. So I go, And she's like, you killed it. <laughs> so I became, thank you so much. Uh, <laughs> really, I became such a huge Yoko Ono fan because she was great. So I decided I was, was going to start my own Yoko Ono tribute band. I called it Oh No. <laughs> and it was going great, man. She would come to the rehearsals and she was giving us some insight and some feedback. And uh, then she decided to break up the band. <laughs> uh, so I'm noticing people are really, really uptight these days, you know. So the other day, I'm holding the door for this lady, and because I'm a, I'm a gentleman, right? So I'm holding the door, and then she goes to grab it like I'm not doing a good job. And I'm like, uh, you know, I got it, man. I'm, I'm committed to this act right here, you know. So uh, she goes, excuse me, and I'm like, what? I'm just trying to be courteous. She's like, this is the ladies' room? And I'm like, yeah, so? She's like, this is my stall. So because of that selfless act, I'm not allowed back at Lane Bryant. Um, you know, so, uh, you know, when I do my gigs, you know, I like to dress, you know, a little more flamboyant than this. You know, I dressed with some flash and some flair. So I got my purple platform shoes. Uh, I got my, my fur coat, my rock star glasses. And uh, this lady comes up to me during the gig and she goes, that is the worst Elton John impersonation I have ever seen. I'm like, uh, that's because I'm Prince. <laughs> and she goes, in that case, you killed it. <laughs> so, uh, so some parting words, people, words, have meaning. So um, I'm in this group text with my friends and family, and um, you know, this is why grammar is important because instead of writing, I love you guys, I accidentally wrote, I love guys. <laughs> so my cousin goes, like, You're so brave, thanks for sharing. <laughs> my father's like, It's about time. <laughs> and then, of course, my fiance chimes in, she's like, I knew it. We've been engaged 15 years now, it all makes sense. So I'm like, guys, it was a mistake. And my friend Gary goes, how dare you, you bastard, call our love a mistake. I'm like, one time, Gary. And I was really drunk. It's supposed to be our little secret. So uh, that's my time here tonight. But before I go, I really wanted to thank Tide in media, media and Pink Tide for introducing me to Mr. Peter Bales and Mr. Rich Walker, uh, Stanford University. It's been, and I gotta tell you, man, it's been a phenomenal experience, very nerve wracking, but uh, you guys really killed it as an audience tonight. Thank you guys. And now he tried something different. Stand up comedy. Way to go, huh? Isn't that great? Yeah!